Here's a good example of rapid evolution in nature in a fish in ecological time. It's one of a series of cases that accumulated in the 1970s and 1980s that demonstrated that evolution isn't all about dinosaurs and millions of years and slow, steady change. Evolution in stuff like the color of the male's body, the number of babies the female has, how fast they grow, all kinds of ecologically and behaviorally important properties can happen real quick. This was done by doing an experiment in which the guppies interacted with predators. This is a cichlid fish, Crenocicla. This is the pike killifish, Rivulus. And it was done in Trinidad by David Resnick, who was at Riverside. Now, the setup in Trinidad basically is that there is a mountain range on the north end of the island. And there are lots of little streams that are going down the mountain range into a river, and they go over waterfalls. And the fact that the stream goes over a waterfall has prevented the large predators from getting up above the waterfall. And above some of the waterfalls, there were no fish at all. So what Resnick did was he took fish that had evolved for a long time with predators below the waterfalls, and he put them above the waterfalls. And he did replicates. It was a nice system. There were lots of streams. You could do it four or five times to make sure it was a consistent pattern. And these are the results. The life history traits, that means how big they are when they're born, how old and how large they are when they mature, how many babies they have, and how long they live, all evolved rapidly. So they responded quickly. The fastest rates of evolution were measured in things that occur early in life, so the number of babies in the first brood, how big the babies were in the first brood, how fast the babies grew. That all changed quickly. And basically the pattern was this. If the guppies are under a high predation regime, they mature earlier and they have more smaller offspring. They have a shorter life. This all has something to do with the evolution of aging and why we grow old and die. And they had more smaller offspring. Okay? The males were less colorful and they displayed more discreetly. Guppy courtship is normally a fairly elaborate thing. The male, whom you can see, is really brightly colored. Uh, also has an elaborate display behavior. And he will dance up in front of the female, and he will wave his fins back and forth, and then he will dart, dart in and try to mate. And the female prefers males who have bright orange spots. The bright orange spots probably were originally a direct indication that the male was good at catching crustaceans because the crustaceans have carotenoids in them. So they catch amphipods and shrimp and things like that, and then reprocess the chemicals, and they can make orange with it. That was an indication that a male was a good forager, and so the female might select that male, because then her babies also would be good at catching food. However, the male was dancing in front of the female, and that makes him a sitting duck for Crenocicla. And as we'll see a little bit later in the lecture, sexual selection involves a direct trade-off between mating success and survival, and these guys were displaying frantically to get mating success at the risk of being snapped up by a predator. And the ones that survived were the ones that simplified their display behavior. Okay? So this all happened pretty quick. 